President, please be seated. The report is now back in session, and I now give the floor to the Defence Council for Mr. Nguyen Chia to resume the key document presentation. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I have uh, four more Krang uh, Chan documents to go. Um, first one is uh, what we believe is a possible DK era forgery E3 slash 2785. It's a letter signed by uh, Sun, a person named Sun, rather, addressed to brother An, dated 7 March, English ERN 00322193, Khmer 00079115, French 00753636. Uh, the letter mentions persons who were trying Cette to escape to Vietnam. However, Vietnam. during testimony before the tribunal, uh, Dassan testified that while he accepted that other documents were written by him, tribunal, this document was not my handwriting. Uh, the next document, Mr. President, is E3-2423. Uh, it's a note from Sun, a person called Sun, to an unknown recipient of unknown date, asking for further investigation uh, or interrogation of certain prisoners, English ERN 003222-10, English Khmer 0079-28, excuse me, 791-28, and French 0061173-2. Um, the document mentions two prisoners, uh, Hul and Seyan, and asks about the network. Um, also, during uh, his testimony, San Tassan said, this is not my handwriting. Lastly, finally, uh, document E3-2452. Uh, this document appears to be a compilation uh, including a letter written by Nov. Uh, dated 8 October 1977 from Sray Renon, English ERN 0084 French 0087283 The letter in question mentions a new person named uh, Sen Q who deserted his unit for two days. Um, witness Nutnouf, who appeared in this trial segment agreed that he had been a Sroronon commune chief during the DK. However, he said twice in his life testimony that the letter was, and I quote, not my handwriting, and that he could not recognize the handwriting. Uh, Nouv then clarified that there was no other person who may have been called Nouv, and speculated that perhaps someone else, like a clerk, wrote this letter. Uh, the very last Kran um, Kachan document that I would like to present this morning, Mr. President, is um, an execution list, an alleged execution list of Lon Nol soldiers. Um, it is uh, a purported execution list of Lon Nol soldiers and officials in Trump Cop District. And the document's details are as follows E3 slash 4083. It's a document named uh, Number of Prisoners. Um, English ERN numbers are 00323943 until 78. Khmer 00068024-37 and French 00778851-79. As already discussed earlier, there are significant discrepancies between the Khmer document and its English and French translations. In the Khmer document, a notation appears in places throughout the document which we understand is translated as the initials uh, K-T, 
However, the English version used an X instead, while uh, the French version used the word éliminé. But we contend that it has not been uh, proven that the annotation KT appearing throughout the list uh, clearly means contact, or that contact unequivocally and only means executed. I further note that at least one soldier's uh, alleged execution date is recorded as 8 January 1979, that is, as we all know, one day after the Vietnamese invaded, that is English ERN 0032394500000 Finally, Mr. President, I note that the Khmer original document is not an original at all, but a very poor quality copy. Uh, indeed, the first Khmer uh, to English translators believe they were unable to translate the document, instead placing a document on the case file indicating that the document was illegible. And, and there was no translation. This concludes, uh, Mr. President, Your Honours, my first Président, part Madame of my presentation. Juges, I move voilà. now to the second part, that Ce is the living and working conditions. In Trump Cook cooperatives. Dans les coopératives in this very short part, I uh, will present a small group of uh, seven documents. Um, first, I would like to present a pair of documents that provide some insight into uh, DK policies in relation to health, E3-226. Um, these are minutes of um, a meeting of the Ministry of Health and Social Affairs dated 10th of June 1976, English ERN 0018336565, ending 67 and 69, Khmer 00017150, ERNs ending 52 and 55, and French 00296159, and ERNs ending on 61. Um, Mr. President, during this meeting, several reports were made uh, concerning the health situation in the DK, including the following, and I quote, uh, we were able to distribute medicines to bases as set forth in the party's uh, direction. Up to date, there was no medicine that, that was decayed or destroyed by fire. The diet ration could be resolved by ourselves and we made many and, and we made clothes for many units. In May 1976, we did not go and get fishes from the Ministry of Commerce. We were self-supported. You can Nous find that on English ERN 0018-3365, Khmer 0017150, and French 0029-6159. The following quote is, reads as follows. Uh, we had produced medicine for malaria and all kinds of medicines and serums. However, we had postponed production of a number of medicines due to the shortage of raw materials. The capability of producing medicine was in line with what Ankar planned. English ERN 0018-3367-00017152-0029-6161. Although I also note that the word Ankar does not appear in the Khmer and French version of this document. This report, Mr. President, goes on to say that concerning medicine production, uh, and I quote, during the past one or two months we had received much progress, more experiences in production and quality controlling sections, um, and as well as uh, for those who operated the machines, end of quote, uh, English ERN 0018. 3367, And in summary, this document uh, concludes, and I quote, the health issue was too much alleviated if compared um, to last year. But still, there was significant shortfall of medicine, both for people and domestic animals. 
disease de médicaments pour After the war, la population many poisonous pour substances made life of people and domestic animals dangerous Khmer 0017155 and French 0029613. The next document is E3/166. That's a revolutionary flag. Issues two and three, February March. We can therefore see, uh, Mr. President, Your Honours, that access to medicine and hospitals was a CPK priority, and moreover, that there is no indication of a policy to systematically deny uh, new people access to medicine and hospitals. Uh, the second part that I would like to discuss are CPK guidelines about so-called unacceptable uh, behaviour. Um, it goes to uh, acceptable and unacceptable behavior of the people and of cadres, specifically during the democratic Kampuchea regime. And I would like to represent four documents in this category. The first is a document that sets out the CPK leadership's overall view. Uh, of base and new people. Document E3-216, these are uh, standing committee minutes of 24 August 1975, uh, English ERN 0085097, Khmer 00008489, and French 0034337. And in this document, uh, it is written that, and I quote, we prefer to talk about the overwhelming majority of base and new people who are good, end of quote. CPK leadership was also very careful to give guidelines throughout the DK period about bad behavior and how this should be corrected. Next, my next document is E3-10, it's a revolutionary flag of September uh, in October 1976, English ERN 0045050, Khmer 0036, excuse me, 0006300. Six one and French zero zero four nine one eight nine two. In this uh, issue, E310, the CPK leadership stresses that, and I quote, internal contradictions must be sorted out as internal contradictions. They are our flesh and blood. They are not counter-revolutionary. They do not provoke and attack the revolution. These are contradictions due to misunderstanding. They must be sorted out by successive education, end of quote. As to how to do this, the flag goes on to explain that, and I quote, 
One way is to educate, to do political, ideological and organizational work within the general framework in order to lessen or postpone the contradiction and not let them be sharp all the time. End of quote. In E3 slash 746, our next document, uh, which is a revolutionary flag of July uh, 1978, we can read the following on English ERN 0042-8305, Khmer 0064-50. That cannot be correct. I will give you uh, a minute later, Mr. President, if that's all right, uh, the full number. French 0006-11886. The party leadership uh, commands that, and I quote, uh, they must be most vigilant cite, about the stances and attitudes of carrying out work in bureaucratic, Mandarin, authoritarian, militaristic, liberal, single-minded, liberal styles. The styles of taking no responsibility for anything vis-à-vis -vis the party, the revolution, and the people, end of quote. Um, and then, revolutionary flag of July Ensuite, 1976, which is E3-4, English ERN uh, 0026899200. And I apologize, maybe the Khmer Pardonnez number is just um, a smaller number. It's, I see here Khmer 0062918. And the Khmer year and number of the previous document is 0064450. And the French ERN of E3-4 is 0034998. Um, and this issue, Mr. President, explained that, and I Monsieur quote, President, in order to build the designated party branches in the cooperatives, it is imperative to totally eradicate the leftist and rightist viewpoints. Leftist meaning not believing in the masses, underestimating the mass movement, seeing all the masses as being the enemy, rightist meaning just continue to induct them carelessly, not based on the foundation of the party statutes. Uh, it is um, wrongly said by me, and I apologize, Mr. President. The Khmer ERN number uh, of E3-746 is 0064500. And the Khmer ERN of E3-4, uh, I will give you in a short moment. Uh, Mr. President, the final document I would like to present... Uh, Le President, President uh, uh, Council Copper, please repeat the ERN number again. Yes, uh, the Khmer e ERN of E3-746 is 0064-500. Um, uh, and the Khmer ERN of E34 will follow uh, shortly. E3 4, uh, Mr. President, the final document I would Monsieur like to present in this second part of my presentation is um, uh, an S21 confession of Chu Chet, the former secretary of the de West Zone. Chet, de la zone um, West. As a preliminary matter, I noted that during yesterday's document Deux hearing, the prosecution's response to uh, our appeal brief was no. President uh, Council uh, Copper, uh, please Coupé, hold on. And Chancellor Wang, you have the floor. Oui, Maître Copé, yes, quel est Copé, what is the objective of document? using this document? Would it be better 
d'attendre que nous ayons examiné les faits concernant S21 avant de se référer à ce document. Oui, mais The, the excerpt that I would like oui. to cite relates directly to very relevant people in sector 13 and district 105. Maître Copé, entendez-vous lire le contenu des confessions des aveux donnés par Chouchette à S21 Êtes-vous informé que euh, les crimes de torture font partie des accusations qui sont portées contre les accusés et les tortures commises à S21 uh, I'm certainly aware, uh, Judge Lavergne, Maître Copé, j'en suis bien I'm conscient, Monsieur le juge. Thing. The exact same thing, as a matter of fact, that the prosecution en fait, j'allais faire exactement la même chose que ce qu'a fait l'accusation uh, hier. J'allais lire un petit uh, passage d'un aveu, d'un détenu. Dans le cas précis, il s'agit d'un passage qui est pertinent uh, par rapport à Trump Cook, par rapport au secteur 13. Um, so Uh, it is our position that if the prosecution is allowed to read si excerpts from alleged confessions at Krang Tachan, we would be able to do. We should be able to do the same Nous in relation to this specific S21 confession from Chuchet when he speaks about uh, Saum, uh, the Secretary, Saum, Secretary, Secretary Takif, Saum's Takif, deputy um, Pen, Pen, and. Um, Like I said, Takif, a member of the Trump administration. So I think, uh, in essence, there is uh, uh, no difference whatsoever between what the prosecution did, uh, reading excerpts of his confession to make his point, and reading uh, me by me uh, parts of the uh, confession of Chuchet making our point. Okay. President, uh, the uh, international deputy co-prosecutor, you can proceed. Le international a la uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, there is a Merci, world Président. of difference between Il what we did and what Mr. Cope wishes to start doing right now. Um, first of all, Cope. we read from uh, an chose, interrogator's notebook. Uh, as is clear from the references I was reading, um, Uh, this was different than a confession signed by a prisoner. Um, uh, the note, uh, uh, the identification of the prisoner's um, statements by the interrogators describing why they were arrested, um, that is admissible evidence. What Mr. Cope wants to do now, if I understand, is to read statements in the body of the confession of Chuchet, uh, making assertions that certain cadres from the Southwest Zone were part of traitorous networks. He wants to use, and let's be very clear about this, Nunchea, in this courtroom, wants to justify killing people by the confessions his people obtained by torture back in the 70s. Nothing uh, uh, could be more barred by the torture convention than that. That is exactly uh, the purpose of the torture convention, is to prevent people from relying on confessions obtained by torture to prove the, the guilt of that person. Um, so, uh, to say that we're doing the same thing, I could not disagree more. Parfait désaccord avec la, la, la défense qui dit que nous faisons la même chose que ce qu'elle s'apprête à faire. Uh, a... Maître Copé Can I? Puis-je? We, we made a, uh, a special um, appeal ground on this very issue. Nous avons un appel à ce sujet. Uh, absolutely protects the use, um, protects the accused or any accused or suspect against uh, torture. Uh, the question whether certain elements from a confession which might possibly be torture tainted, whether they can be used for other purposes is something now to be debated by the Supreme Court Chamber. But again, I do not see any difference in why it is that the prosecution is allowed to use parts of these confessions from Grand Tachan for their purposes, and we are not allowed to use parts of these confessions for our purposes.
Le président. Councilor Copper, the chairman would like to invite you that the la Chambre souhaite vous informer du fait que le contenu des archives sous la torture ne peut When être lu. Quand la Chambre read, autorise l'accusation à lire des passages only des archives, mais seules les annotations ont été lues. So there is a difference between allowing the annotation or the, the content of that record as a result of a torture. Qui peuvent avoir Thank été you. Obtenu sous la torture. So I understand that I have to Maître move Copé. on. I cannot use. Je comprends donc que je dois poursuivre et que um, je ne peux pas utiliser part of his confession, which uh, not necessarily is the result of torture. But I'll, I'll, I'll move on. Um, just to make sure that I will actually move, um, be in time. Uh, yes, I think so. Um, Mr. President, I move Monsieur on to um, document E3/294. And this is, a, this is a document relating to the treatment of targeted groups. In this part, I will focus on three specific groups, uh, the Khmer Krom, the Buddhists, and former Lone Nol soldiers and officials. Um, Khmer Krom is coming up um, all the time in this part of the segment. That's why we uh, would like to say something about it as well. Uh, as we said, um, Yesterday and in earlier submissions, we questioned whether the Khmer Krom have a place as a targeted group within case 002-02 trial. However, assuming that the Chamber's forthcoming decision determines that they do, I want to mention two documents which we consider to be relevant. First of all, E3-294, that is a foreign broadcast information service compilation for October 78, which includes a 30 September 1978 report by the Phnom Penh Domestic Service in Cambodia on the, vis on the visit of the Japanese Friendship Association delegation to the Southwest Region, in which ERN 001-70173, and there are uh, no Khmer or French, French translations. Um, E3-294 uh, details how the delegation has traveled to Takeo, uh, where they interviewed some Khmer Krom who were described as and I quote, victims of Vietnamese persecution and suppression, and the quote, and who, I quote, have taken refuge in Kirivong district. The report continues that, and I quote, the friendly Japanese visitors were shocked by the tales told by the Khmer Krom compatriots about the massacres and atrocities perpetrated by the Vietnamese with the aim of extermination the Khmer race in a most fascist and savage manner, end of quote. E3 slash um, 2435 presented by the prosecution yesterday. Uh, that is a document from the Ang Ta Som Commune Chief dated 26 April 1977 and addressed to the Trumpock District Office requesting instructions in relation to the treatment of Khmer Vietnamese families. English ERN 0032214, Khmer 00271001, and French 00. Uh, the request details the situation of Khmer Vietnamese couples who request authorization to go to Vietnam. It notes that some Cambodian husbands had married Yun wives and some Yun wives had married Cambodian husbands. And the request said that if they were all Yun, they would send them to Ankar, but requested to know, and I quote, if it was like this, what would Ankar decide then? Please inform us. And of quote. Et si c'est le cas, est-ce que l'Ankar um, peut prendre une décision The second part uh, is relating to um, the treatment of Buddhists. Il s'agit accordé aux bouddhistes. And um, there are two documents, deux documents, or rather one document and one video un clip concerning uh, the Buddhists that I would like to show. And I would like to start with a video, vidéo, uh, which is a video E3 slash 3201R, and uh, this video depicts a visit by 
a delegation of top Vietnamese leaders to the DK in 1975. As the video shows, the delegation is taken to visit and admire the silver pagoda at the royal palace and the statues of Buddha it contains. The footage also clearly shows that the CPK key leaderships are in attendance, including Nguyen Chia and Pol Pot and the other members of the standing committee. I would like to note that it is the footage that we're interested in, not the commentary provided. Uh, but I do highlight that the commentary emphasizes that most Cambodians are Buddhists. And Mr. President, I would now like to request the chamber um, uh, and the AV unit to play this video on screen. Uh, the relevant time point is from minute uh, 6.30 till uh, 8.55, so two and a half minutes. And uh, AV unit staff, uh, it is the file called Clip 1. President, yes, uh, you may proceed and the AV unit, uh, please show the video clip as requested by the Nunchi's defense. And they hold firm belief in the National United Front. Under the leadership of the Communist Party, Cambodian people have engaged bravely and vigorously in the resistance movement, which since 1970 resulted in the defeat of 100,000 American soldiers and their henchmen. Not only did we survive the campaign of intensive carpet aerial bombardment by B-52 bombers of the American imperialists, after a period of more than 100 days of non-stop storming attack, we finally formed the Khmerization plan initiated by the American imperialists, and tens of thousands of the puppet soldiers had been smashed by our Cambodian armed forces. We completely liberated our country on 17 April 1975 and brought peace and harmony to our motherland. A friendly visit to Kampuchi by the delegation of the Labour Party of Vietnam denotes the greatest significance. The visit coincides with the fundamental situational shift in Vietnam, Kampuchi and Laos. The struggle by the people in the three nations has resulted in the greatest success. The revolutionary movement in the three countries, Indochina, has reached a new stage and brought along a never-before-seen historical symbol of hope. Under the leadership of the Communist Party of Kampuchi, led by Comrade Secretary General Salot So, during the last three months, thousand Um, the next document, uh, Mr. President, I would like to present is E3-2818, uh, uh, that is a book uh, from Ian Harris called Buddhism under Pol Pot. I would like to refer to English ERNs 0070410. Uh, ending in 
zero three three until five three one eight till twenty one zero eight three until four eight nine two and nine nine six until seven um, uh, for Khmer and French, Mr. President, um, the book is only partially translated and not these specific, some of these specific passages are. So I will highlight that when I uh, read these passages to you. Um, uh, Ian Harris suggests that there are other co causes for poor treatment of the Buddhists such as the U.S. bombing of pagodas and the fact uh, that monks were used as spies during the Republic. Harris um, noted that during the Civil War, uh, one-third of pagodas were destroyed by American bombing, that is uh, English ERN 0070 4015 until 7, Khmer 0079 1318 till 21, um, which were um, specifically targeted for strategic purposes, that is English ERN 007 uh, 04083. Um, Ian Harris also writes that uh, during the DK there were locations where people were still allowed to perform Buddhist worship during the DK, English 0070-4011. Uh, or individuals given such permission at English ERN 0070-4033 until 5. Harris also suggests that, and I quote, despite the very significant losses sustained by the population of which this road monastics formed a part, uh, there was no policy for the systematic liquidation of monks in democratic Kampuchea, end of quote, and you can find that at English ERN 0070-4083. Moreover, Harris notes that it was a fact that the Khmer Republic used monks as spies. The spies that were caught were killed because of their being a spy, which is unrelated to the fact that their status as monks as well. You can find that on English ERN. Uh, 007 03892 and 007 until 7. Uh, when monks were uh, executed, Harris said this was, and I quote, not primarily because of their commitment to the Buddhist religion, but was related to the fact that they were considered to be enemies associated with higher levels of the previous regime. End of quote. English ERN 0070 and finally, uh, Mr. President, in enfin, Ian Harris's book, um, it says that two years of research indicates that abbots and their assistants were rarely executed simply by virtue of their seniority. And you can find that at English here in 0070. 4084. I would like um, my to end my presentation with uh, another video, uh, Mr. President, Your Honours. It's a video which relates to former Lon Nol soldiers and officials and their practices during the Civil War. It is E3 slash 3116R. And um, what I would like to show you is uh, an excerpt of um, Australian journalist John Pilger's documentary, Cambodia, called The Bloodiest Domino. And the relevant excerpt is um, two minutes from 2222 to 2411. And uh, the documentary um, is explaining that eating the enemy's liver is an ancient tradition of warfare in Cambodia and the film shows this practice uh, done by Lon Nol soldiers. And if you allow me, Mr. President, um, then I would like to tell the AV unit that this is the file called Clip 2. Perhaps you could explain the relevance of this video for, the for this part of the trial? Um, I actually have my, my point here after the, the video. Um, um, but so the relevance should be explained before we decide whether you can show it or not for us to be able to rule. That's fine. Uh, while former Lonol soldiers and officials um, are usually portrayed 
as uh, hapless victims of a brutal Khmer Rouge. This video suggests otherwise. It shows that some practices often wield out as example, examples of the Khmer Rouge's are uniquely depraved in humanity. And recently highlighted, by the way, by Ambassador David Sheffer in a speech at an American university, had in fact long been practiced by the Lono army and had been documented and screened in the public domain. And this video, in our view, perfectly illustrates the point we have sought to make today and throughout this trial so far, and that is that we need to set aside uh, the popular narrative of what happened uh, in the DK, what we think we know, and come to this trial with a critical and open mind. So I think uh, this, relevant, uh, this video is very relevant, um, especially also in the light of uh, Sai Sen's testimony um, and how it is reported. I think uh, we tried to show this video earlier, um, and then I remember you said uh, this is something that we should not put before a witness, but rather present it during uh, a document hearing. Um, the eating, the practice of eating livers of dead corpses is apparently something that was done frequently by Lono soldiers and officials. And I think it uh, could necessarily put uh, this practice in context uh, in relation to uh, Sai Sen's testimony. So I think although it is footage that shows events prior to 1975, I think it's very relevant, uh, and um, it is on the case file, it's been there for a long time on the case file, and I think we should be allowed to show these two minutes uh, to the chamber. President, I'd like to hand the floor to Judge Cody Defense to respond to, to the request by the Defense Counsel for Nunchi. Judge Friends, do you have the floor? The, the Chamber hopes that the idea is not to support an, an argument that Whatever somebody has done before he is potentially being killed justifies this killing. So, for the very limited purpose to put the practice of eating livers and various forms of cannibalism, which have been broadly discussed in this tribunal and, and in the press, into context, we are allowing to. Um, view this video or the part you want to show us. Um, thank you, Judge Fence. Uh, it is video clip two for the AV unit, Mr. President. President, the DB staff, please play the second video clip 
as identified by Council Copper for Nunchia. À la demande de la défense de Nunchia. While Sihanouk was rallying the countryside, in the cities, Lon Nol was rallying popular support for the expulsion of the Vietnamese from their sanctuaries. In the ensuing confusion, atrocities were committed against the Vietnamese who had lived in Cambodia for generations. While thousands of innocent Vietnamese were killed, ancient traditions of warfare would dictate a more gruesome fate for enemy soldiers. Culturally, there were great gaps between the Western perceptions of what was acceptable and Cambodian ideas of what was acceptable. When we had film of Cambodians cutting open uh, bodies and ripping out the liver and eating them, Western opinion was pretty shocked by the Lom Nol forces doing that. But this is what Cambodians are doing, were doing by tradition. Uh, it is uh, said that it's getting the spirit, the strength of your enemy. Uh, it's a, a ritual. Quite frequently in the early years of the war, as a mark of friendship, they would ask you to come and join them in eating the liver of, of, of the dead. On one occasion, I was having lunch with the governor of one of the provinces and out on the lawn in front of the governor's residence there were all these uh, so-called Viet Cong bodies, corpses laid out, all of them slashed open and the liver taken out and a truck arrived and they started tossing these dead bodies onto the truck. Uh, it, it was not very appetizing. And with this video clip, Mr. President, I conclude my uh, document presentation. President, thank you, and uh, the time is also convenient for us to have a lunch break. We take a break now and return at 1.30 this afternoon. Security personnel, you are instructed to take Kiu Sampon to the waiting room downstairs and have him return to the courtroom this afternoon before 1.30. The court is now in recess. Something cultural.